one. Hello, I'm Stuart Simons and this is my friend Stanley and I'm really excited to be judging at Madramania this year, aren't we Stanley? Yes. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing it and it's such a shame that we can't come over in person but I know that you know with all the technical abilities of the internet and Wi-Fi it's amazing that we can do this virtually so I'm really excited and this is my seminar so this is Stanley he's a Cavapoo and um, when he came in this morning to be honest I was a bit like oh he hasn't got as much hair as I was hoping but he's still got quite a lot his legs are still full he's still got quite a lot on his head his body was done with a 7F recently not that long ago it was about probably about six five six weeks ago so oh you're right there so the regrowth is coming back and i haven't decided quite what length i'm going to do but i'm going to try and demo for you today uh, a cavapoo petrin so i hope you enjoy it and i hope you find it helpful he loves giving kisses which i love yes i love you very much that's correct okay so i'm just going to crack on i've got julie harris here with me you'll probably have heard of her She's, um, <laughs> she's going to be holding the camera. She's my camera lady for today. And also, I think because in normal circumstances, a uh, seminar, you'd be asking me questions. I don't often do them, actually. But I know that you'd be asking me questions and I'd hopefully be answering them well. So Jude is going to be you. And she's going to ask me questions and talk to me throughout the grooming process so that we try and get, keep it as education as possible. Because I don't know if you've ever met me before, if you've ever seen me do anything before. I do like to talk. I'm a bit of a chat, bit of a, oh, bit of a chatterbox, and um, I just think that it's really good if we can discuss the things that you might be noticing. And so Julie's going to try and notice them, and I'm going to try and answer her to the best of my ability um, about how sort of I get through a petrin and what I do every day in my salon. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, so sit back and relax, enjoy. Uh, Stanley, have his hair cut. Enjoy. Right, so first of all, I'm going to start. I'm looking at him. So I always just give a quick, obviously he's been prepped. I've given him a nice bath in, I actually use the Julie Harris strip down shampoo, which I love. She'll love that I said that, by the way. Good choice. It's very good. I, I love <laughs> it on a curly coat because it takes out the, con the conditioner. It, it takes out the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Julie? It the is. moisture. It dries it out a bit. And you, with a poodle coat, for me, to get the best results, I like it to be a little bit crispy. I just think I can get a better scissor finish when there's not as much sort of moisture in the coat. So that's why I use her shampoo. And it's not because she's my business partner, right, sweetheart. Um, it's because I really, literally, I do generally love the shampoo on a curly coat, it's my favorite. Um, so I've given her a bath. Are you all right? He's got a bit of an ear thing going on. I noticed earlier when I was doing his prep, I trimmed out his ears on the inside, which is why he's shaking his head. Um, but I wouldn't do anything else to them because they look a bit red. So I'm going to leave those and he'd probably be doing that throughout the groom. So just be prepared for that. But he's had a full prep. I've done his pads. Ta-da! Pads are done. Nails are done. He's been brushed out. I didn't really like it that much because he's a bit of a pain with the prep. But so what I like to do is just have a quick look at exactly what I'm doing and try and get some kind of plan in my mind before I even start. I just think it's the best thing for me to do. I can see that the legs have been left long, so I'm assuming that the owner wants a longer leg, so obviously I'll be doing that. Um, and I'm going to try and work out what blade I'm going to use first. So I'm going to start really long, just to see how much it comes off, because obviously, as I said, this was done with a 7F before, so I now want to see what comes off with a 3. So I'm going to start with a 3, and then I'm going to go to a 4 and see what comes off. I've got another little friend down here. This is Vera, this is Julie's dog. Yes, hello Stanley. Um, she's like a little mascot and she likes to hello oh, Stanley. She likes to sit on my feet while I'm grooming. So if I, if I fall over, it's uh it's Vera's fault. She likes to get in the way. She does. Let me yeah. just look at these ears. I'm a bit worried that you're shaking so much. Okay, they're fine, they're fine. Okay. So here we go. Let's go with the 3F first. So why the 3F, Stu? Do you know what? I just think I love a 3F. I really enjoy a 3F on a pet trim. I think it's a really lovely length. And actually, weirdly enough, that whenever I get a new groomer, they always go 3F. They, not many people use the 3F, but it's my favourite blade. It's absolutely the most, the most used blade in my salon is a 3F. On a body, I really like the finish it gives. Um, it takes off just the right amount for a pet trim if they come in every six weeks. So that's why I really go for a 
three F as much as possible. I think a seven's a bit too short, although I think I'm probably going to do one of these today. Let's just see how much comes off for the three F. So as you can see, there's not a load coming off. It's not going to be a huge difference. I'm not going to do a three F because you're not going to see a difference. So a four, so 13 mils is a three F, a four is a nine, is it nine and a half? Nine and a half. So that's taking a bit more off. And I actually quite like that. So you've got a wide blade. Do you like the wide? I love wide blades. I feel like you can use the corners on a wide blade. Do you know what I mean? Because you can get into nooks and crevices with the corner of the blade. I do like that blade. I'm just going to try a five just to see. Oh, that's handy. Sorry, dear. Just try a five. I think that's oh, the one. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, that's the one. So, Stanley, I'm going to do it with a 5F today. Isn't it funny how you just immediately know as soon lucky, as it happens? Lucky you didn't decide you were going to go with the three. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. No, but do you know what I mean, Julie? Yeah, yeah. You just, you can see the finish is going to be nice. It's going to be enough of a difference. It's going to have a nice haircut. So, I, I always start with the body. I've done the prep, like I said. I've done the pads and I've done the, uh, I haven't done his sanitary with bum because I like to do that during the groom. So I'll go up here, the neck. So you just said you like the finish it's given. So what are you looking for when you when you clip sort of like a poodle? What's the With a pair, if I'm clipping, I like a velvet finish. It needs to look velvety and luxurious. And that to me does. Like if you can see, can you see um, the longer bits? It's looking, it's starting to look a bit dry and it goes a bit pale. Mm -hmm. Once you've clipped the right length, it kind of goes really velvety and lovely. And that's why it's I like it. It's a bit it. like moleskin, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So, I clip the body. So what, like what are your clipping lines when you're doing this type of trim? So for me, that's a good question. I take the most, the majority of the body away, like this. I don't go any further than that when I'm doing the body, just to that, um, the sort of thigh bone there. The and, thigh. Why, and why is that? Just personal preference. That's just what I like to do. Just to start with, I like to get the jacket off first. So I go under the arms, I take everything down. We don't leave a skirt or anything, so I'm taking all this down. And I'm always correcting his stand, uh, the way he stands, throughout the whole of the groom. I'll always be doing that, just to stack him nicely so that I can see what I'm doing. So I've left it to there. And it's almost like, you know, what's that poodle trim? Lamb Italian trim? countries? Oh, lamb um, trim, or Italian mm, country. Italian it's country's a bit, got yeah, the wheel arches. It's a bit too much, but I like to leave that sort of join, that dolly join I call it, just when I'm taking the body down and I'll do the same on the front because I don't want to go too far so I always leave a bit more than I'm hoping for that I'm going to finish with. So what's your landmark for clipping then? You say you don't want to go too far, what would be too far? Well for this dog, it depends on what you're doing, but for this dog I'm going to go down his thigh so I will, I will take that off eventually. But if I take this too far down then I've got nothing to blend. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I'm gonna go down the thigh, I'm gonna take that shorter. I might go a length up and then blend it in, but that's sort of where I, I like to leave it there so that I can concentrate on the leg separately. I just wanna get the body done for now. And what about the front leg? Where do you stop with your clipping on At that the shoulder. Oh, he's got lovely coloring. Oh, he's just gorgeous, isn't he? I just love him, he's such a good boy. When we first started to do him, as you remember, I'm sure you remember, I want him to stop shaking his head. Um, when we started doing it, he was a pain. He was so hard to groom. But he, you know, he's a really good, his family um, are fabulous with the grooming. They come in every five or six weeks. And it, he's just got, it's something that he's really got used to. And it just goes to show that if you're regular and you don't let your dog down, they'll have a nice time at the cellar. Mm. He's a good boy. He's a really you say? good boy. Bit of a pain with the prep. Oh, he's terrible with prep. But it's funny because Jenny, who owns him, she was um, telling me, oh, he always shakes. He always shakes when he comes to the door. And I actually think it might be excitement. Yeah, <laughs> excitement. oh no, he can't. He, he jumps up at all of us. Yeah, he's so excited yeah. to see everyone. He's such a happy little boy. So I'm just, like I said, I'm tipping, doing the same on this side of the room on the other side. And then I'm just going to go over make sure I've got all the stray hairs. What I might do is just gonna find my brush. Sorry Vera. 
so far, I'm not going to stand. stand oh, we, do. we we stand in our home all the time, and you kick her. Do you know what I mean? Because you you just walk and she's she seems by your like feet. it. So I'm just going to give it a little brush backwards because obviously it's a hair bearing dog, so you can do this. And then I'm just going to take any thing I've missed. Oh, can you see how much more? Did you see how much came off there? I don't know if you've got that, Julie. Can you see how much more is coming off now? So that's your check? That's my check, yeah, to make go sure. Over, go over once. Go over once and then I go over again. Once I've brushed it, sort of back it, it just gets all that lovely extra hair off because then you're going to get the best finish you can possibly get. Do you know, it's funny because... Uh, <laughs> Every time I do that, I always think, oh, I shouldn't do that because the oils in your hand can dull the coat, especially on a black dog, it's so true. But I can't help it. So, something to think about. We all do it though, don't we? We do. It's like the amount of times I brush hair off the table with my hand oh, as well. No. Actually, and then, then complain about splinters. Actually, do you know what I'm thinking about it, Julie? Can you, I'm not sure you can see him very well. I think I need to have another Oh, you're not going to dress up, are you? Can you see, because I'm wearing a black top, I'm worried that you can't see him very well. So I've got... They can, they can see you fine, Stuart, aren't they? Well, <laughs> I have actually got two aprons here. Yeah, it's all, might help you. it's all about, it's all about Stu. So, are we thinking cats? Cats. <laughs> or mm. pink? Oh, I think pink. I think pink. Go with pink, pink go one. with pink. Because then you might hopefully be able to see Stanley better. You'll pop, won't you, Stanley? That looks good. Does it look better? Yeah, good call. Let's see. 25 years in the business. <laughs> Never a secret dropped. Yes, I love you. I love you. Right, so I'm going to do the same again <laughs> on this side just to brush it out from underneath. And we're going to. So I'm using the new Andis. Because I don't know what they're called. They're the Pulse ZRs. The Pulse ZRs. I do really like them, but I've got some of my son in London and the blades don't kick on. Some of the blades don't kick on particularly well. Do they not? No, it's really annoying. So, but I, the ones here are perfect. It's all to do with, with the blade drive. Yeah. And I also, if you multi use clippers and blades, then, the, um, then they kind of don't like it very much. No. And I know you've got some um, Oscars at your oh, place as well, Oscars. haven't you? Yeah, I really enjoy using those. They're quite heavy though, and I do find my wrist starts to hurt after a while with the Oscars. These are really nice feel that you can get your hand around them nicely. Very nice. <laughs> right, so I've done that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the trimmers. Now I always use like the bravuras, which I know are quite popular. Everyone seems to like to use these, but I also really like to use a 10 on these or a 15 on these. So if you do ever not have your bravuras to hand, those blades are just the same and they work equally as well. So I know they're quite hard to get them. We get, we get a bit frustrated with our trimmers, don't we? Oh God, I'm always dropping. They're always falling off the table, dropping. And that's really like, good boy. The blades, um, don't say sharp, brilliantly long. So I never, I know that you're supposed, I always, you're supposed to prep before the cut, and I do, I always um, do a prep, obviously prep the coat, but I always like to do the sanitary and the bum during the groom. I have no idea why, I just think it depends on how far you're taking the legs. If you take too much out of the sanitary beforehand, then you sort of stuff yourself for the rest of the groom. Because sometimes That's it, a good can sit, point. it can sit wrong. So I always do it during the groom. So even if I was to compete. Did you do a little bow then? Sorry? You did a little bow then, was that for my... <laughs> do you know what, I don't even realise I did it. <laughs> so I lift a leg up, obviously I don't lift it too high, I take it out from underneath here, going away from his willy, and I'll, I almost scoop out, I think that's the... Oh, I'm having trouble with my camera angle um, here. Hang on, I'm going to put the camera in, oh my god no, it's not anywhere. Oh, see? there we go, we can see the willy. So I'm scooping out, and then when I get to the willy, I get scoop the other way. That's it, one side done. And I'm correcting him all the time, putting his standing up again. See that other side. As you can see, I'm just not taking too much up because it can ruin your finish. 
and then so you kind of leave a, a bit of the back I do leg, I do and like until here. I do the back leg that's I leave all that yeah so that's done cool um, like I said I've done the pads already sometimes if the dog's got matting under here I might take a little bit out from under there but again if you take too much out <laughs> you're ruining your finish this means you get that concave in don't you by the uh... yeah. By the armpit. What am I looking for, Julie? I don't know. Comb, perhaps? <laughs> That's it, I love this comb. you tried these, Carl? I don't know if you... I like They're the, um, the uh, mask... Are they the Simpsons combs? I've lost my other one. Okay. Bear with me, everyone. Bear with, bear with. It's, um, it's a Bowie. And I can't oh, it's on the floor. It's on, of course, it's on the floor because everything is stupid. So these are my two favourite combs. These are my co my favourite combs when I'm doing a poodle coat because this one <clears throat> this one brushes it picks all the hairs up really beautifully, and you can just lift the hair and get as much air in as possible. And if there is a snag in the coat, it doesn't pull it too much. It's there because they're quite wide but it does tell you about them so you can fix it. This one I love because I love the feel of it. I love this handle bit, it's really, really nice. It's a groom master, I think, is it Simpsons? Yeah. It might be a Simpsons comb. Um, and it's really, really thin on one side and really uh, wide on the other. So I use this mostly for nearly everything I do and most dogs. So that's my favorite comb. So did you use conditioner anywhere on Stanley no. at all? No. I did a little bit of Julie Harris coat maintenance in the ears because there are a few little tang rolls. But that's only to be expected on Poodle. And what products do you use on the Poodle coat? What are you going to be using? So today, what do you mean products? Do you use a scissor spray or I anything like that? I sometimes use a scissor spray and I love Colin Taylor's scissor mist and I love uh, the Simpsons one if I can find it. I will find those for you. Thank you. I really Is that <laughs> We tied it up. We tied it up. It is in there. Oh, there it is. I love this. Do you know why I love it? Because of the smell. I love it. You're terrible. It's the smells beautiful. It smells lovely. It's not too much. It's a really nice smell. Have we got any of my Colin Taylor one? I might have taken it to the other side. You might have taken it to the other salon. Oh, no, hold on. Is that the one? Now I'm confused. Okay, so here's the one you like. That's the one I like. That's the one you like. That one there. You got to. <laughs> this is my favourite. So that's my favourite scissor, scissor mist. So I'm going to be using that today. I do use the Colentator one as well, but it's in London. So I'm sorry, Stan, I need to keep waiting. So what I do is um, I work my way around the dog. And so I'm going to start with the back right leg and I'm going to put the foot in first. I always start with the foot and then I start with the hop. Then I go into the hop and then I put the rest of the finish on the leg. And once I've done that leg, it depends on what mood I'm in, whether I go to the front leg. If he's been a pain or the dog's been hard on the back leg, I'll get the other one done straight away. Because the last thing I want to do is get through to the nice bit and then have to go back to the nasty bit again. I like to get all the difficult bits over before, um, before I finish the dog, because I want to finish on a good, happy note. So I just make sure there's, I go through with the comb, make sure there's no snags, no knots, no nothing. Nails have been done. Whilst I'm standing, I've noticed that he's still got some hair on his willy. So I'm just going to get my bravura. And tidy that up. Nobody likes a hairy willy. That's better, isn't it, Stanley? So this is the leg I'm going to start on. And like I said, I'm just going to go through and make sure. I'm using the thin end of the comb, just make sure there's no snags and knots. He doesn't really like this very much, but there you go. And I'm going to get my scissors. So it's just a question of deciding which scissors to use. I'm going to go with my katana straights to start with. I'm going to try and get... I'm just going to show you what Stuart has to work with, look. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try and get the sort of shape and the finish to the back leg first. So um, you've got your katanas. Tell us about them. Well, I love these. Can you listen? Oh. So it's funny because, um, you know, I did Pooch Perfect. The, I was the consultant on Pooch Perfect this year when we were filming and I spoke to one of the judges and we were talking about scissors and um, I could hear her scissoring in the background. And I went, I recognise that. What's that noise? I said, they're katanas, aren't they? And she was like, yes. 
So I can tell a pair of katanas by the sound. They sound lovely, they sing to me. I really like them, they're really nice to you, they're a really good way, I really get on with them, but you don't get on with them. No, me, I do don't, you, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't like them. So it's a bit like Harry Potter, your scissors will choose you. Oh, we are to go, no, look at you, get you. So I've just prepped him up with hair in my eyes. And what I always start with is just, I take the foot and I go straight across the front and get it as close to the nail as possible. You see that? That's my starting cut on Stanley's haircut, and that's it. <laughs> and then I join it up. So what's your favorite dog to groom? Uh, I really love doing, um, sorry, I'm just thinking. I really love doing fox terriers. Oh, yeah. I really enjoy Fox yeah. Terrier. Sorry, Julie, can I just move you over just a little bit? Thank you, my love. Sorry, the audience. Yeah, audience. sorry, audience. Just need to... So I'm lifting the leg up from the join. I'm not overstressing it. And I'm taking... There, these aren't cutting these. <laughs> I was going to say, you're making a bit of a meal out of that. They're not cutting, I've told you. My scissors are terrible at the moment. Also, I'm missing a pair. Oh, that's all right. I'm going to have to get the hair cut let me just try to see which ones are working. No, I can't, I can't use that as you can. Use that as. <laughs> oh. Trouble is, on another coat, they would probably work no. absolutely fine. Do you know what, no, I've, never had a, I've never had a problem with them. They're, oh really? They're they're blood. Blood. Yeah, I need to get in touch with David. So yeah, we use David Westbrook, Maximum Edge, for our sharpening. We find him, we've never had a problem with him. No, we? he's brilliant, I love yeah. him. Gets and we love him. Gets back to you nice and quick. And because we're a Groomer Spotlight members, we get a uh, discount as well. So, one of the lovely benefits. So did you see what I was doing there? I'm just making basically a nice round foot. And the more that I take off from the side determines how wide I'm gonna take the leg. Do you see what I mean? I'm just gonna get, I'm sorry, I keep... Trying to find the right scissors for myself. Okay, Stanley. So I'm just going to use a little bit of scissoring spray. Where's that the bottom? Down the bottom. And what I tend to do when I'm using some scissoring spray is um, I just do a blast like that, and then I blow it on. Because I always find that if you use too much scissoring spray, the coat gets too wet, and it's just to take the static away. Right, come on. So that I think that's all you need, and then I just brush it up. And you can see the difference already. And then what I'll do, you know, I've left that bit. I just want to take. Some of the weight out of the leg. So I've almost done exactly a straight line down there. Are you with me? Julie, you've got to be the audience. Are you with oh, yeah, me? So, yes, I'm absolutely with you. Sorry. Thank you. Now I know. I'm going to do my 5F down the back leg. So what are your landmarks? What landmarks are you using Well, if that? you think about a schnauzer, the muscle goes like that. I'm kind of doing the same thing. And then I'm going to take it off from the top and I'm just going to fall off so that it just... You're just skimming with your blade. Exactly. So the whole time what I'm doing is I'm trying to look for this column that I need to work out that I'm trying to create. Are you with me? Yeah. I've got some curves here which I really love. And if you notice that I'm using my hand in that, can you see? I'm doing that. <laughs> my hand's upside down and I'm getting the blade to go where I want it to go. So I'm just reinforcing the line that I've made, that I made earlier, and I'm blending it in at the same time. Okay, so you're using what we term as backhand scissoring and forehand scissoring. Exactly. Now, I want him to have a bit of waste, so I'm gonna take that in. Are you doing all that with curves, yeah? I am. Well, it's a poodle, so you can, can't you? That's what I think. And I'm just reinforcing, once again, 
by brushing up and I'll get my straights. And I'm doing the same again. So all the time I'm just reinforcing the shape that I'm making. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously I've done that with the five and now I need to blend that into here. So you're using your curves and you've like flipped them over? Yeah. So they curve the other way. Exactly. Cool. And now... And Stuart's actually got, I don't want to praise him too much, but he's got quite a good scissor action. So he just uses his thumb and he's got a real steady hand. He doesn't, <laughs> what we term as dip and snip. So if you can see the hand's just absolutely staying there. It's not going backwards and forwards into the coat. And that's how you really create that lovely finish. So, and if you notice that I'm always checking the scissors that I'm using. So yes, these are 10 inch pearl, uh, pearl black pearls. Black pearls, yeah. Um, and I, you know, this leg is a long, I can, I, it's a, the dog's long enough for me to use it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So it's half in my work. If I can do that and keep my hands steady, I've created that line down there. And then once I, I've got some more sort of shorter, intricate work, I can use my precious, Colin Taylor precious ones. Um, and I can just go over it and go over the, the bits that I want to really... Detail. Uh, yeah, like detailing. Julie, for that. My pleasure. So, as you can see, it's coming. It's starting to come together. So the next thing I'm going to do is try and build this to this. So the sort of the thigh to the hock. Is that the thigh? I'm really crap with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's the second thigh. The second thigh. Thank second you, Julie. Thigh, and it's at the the uh, opposite of the stifle joint. Exactly. So, yeah. You'd think so, that'd be brilliant. So if you can see at the back, can you just come on this side. Julie? I can. Here we I'm go. I'm going to show you where I've done the sanitary, and I've left that bit there. Can you see? Yeah. That's going to now uh, help me get the lining for the back leg. So you're so you're creating a parallel line. Exactly. Cool. So if you'd have taken that out, it would have it kind would've, of it would have ruined dish, me. Dished in, dished in at the yeah, top. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell where it goes. So I'm, oh, oh nearly slipped. So I'm going. I can't read. Hang on. Oh, really I'm in the way. Am I? Move this table over a bit. <laughs> <laughs> might be easier, might not. Can you see now? Yeah. Hang on. I'm new to this camera work, you know. <laughs> You're very good at it. You haven't seen the results yet. So I'm brushing it up and I'm once again just fixing where he's standing because... Can you see? Yeah, spot on. And I'm just taking everything out so that we're making a nice parallel, parallel line. I'm doing exactly the same really as what I did on the outside of this dog, this, the outside of the leg. And I'm going to where the join is. Stop. Taking it out. You see? Yeah. I'm not sure if you, could, you might be able to have a better angle than me, but. Hang on, and then, come up in here, because of course that's not getting in your way at all. <laughs> that's better. Can you see now? And yeah. now I've made this parallel line, it's happened. So you've not dished in at the top at all? No, that's that's basically where I've gone to. That's that The inside of that leg is fine. When I go to the other leg, I'll just check, because obviously you've got to think of it as a circle. <laughs> So I know that when I'm here, I'm going to see this leg on a different angle and right. there'll be more to come off. Yeah, it's like, I always call it like the fifth side. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. And obviously now that, I, now that I've done this leg, I know that's got to come off, but I didn't want to take it off in case it was too far. Are you with me? Yeah, 100%. So I'm just double checking my work. Remember to clean your table because you never know quite what's attached and what's not. And now I'm going to do the hock. So you're going to come around this side, Julie. I'm going to come around this side. And I want to make sure that this dog looks like he's ready for action. He's, he's going to spring and he's got a lot of uh, energy and he wants to go forward. But at the moment, it looks a bit heavy and dull. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? It looks a bit dumpy. Dumpy. So I'm going to use my curves again. And I always have a little feel about where the hair is and where the foot is. Because you don't want to... Oh, this, is, this table's not working for me now. <laughs> We've moved the table and now it's wonky. Does it take work like this? I don't, I think that one's static or you're actually doing, oh no, you might be doing something. I'm going to show you, this is, this is Stuart in action. <laughs> this is the most This would be happening if I did a seminar though, it'd be exactly the same. <laughs> right, 
think are we, are we wobble free? No, I think we're wobble free. We're wobble free, well done. So, I'm brushing it out again, just seeing what I've got. And like I said, I'm gonna feel where this foot is so that I know what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna take out Oh, is it ticklish? So we have reinforced that line earlier, that straight line. It's now turned into a bit of a circle. It's not easy getting a finish when you've got this mottled tight coat as well, is it? No. It's, it's not very forgiving. So I've seen where I've got to, sorry about that. Do I? but there's still some stray hairs. So I'm pushing him forward slightly so that I can get to them. Oh, that's a good tip. And I'll do the same on this side, just push him forward just slightly. So now that foot's starting to look a lot better, isn't it? Yeah. He's looking a bit more sprightly. So I'm going back to my straights and I want to create a nice shape around where the hock is. Fear of snoring, can you hear it? I thought it was you. No, no, it's not really. anything. <laughs> right, so now that I've done that, I'm now going to join the dots. That's what I like to call this bit. So I haven't touched this yet. Obviously, I did with the side, but this needs to now form a part of the leg. Are you with me? You need to join the dots. So you're using your straight still? I'm using my straights because this area is a straight area to scissor. Okay. And I'm going, this is also a straight area to scissor. So I'm going to, if you come on this side. Oh, hang on. So where his leg bends, that's the join. That's where he needs to kick out from. So I brush it all up. We're getting, that somewhere. Nice. We're getting somewhere now. Okay. So I'm just going to reinforce that with my curves. So I'm using my curves backwards. They're my curves. And I'm using them backwards because they've got a natural scoop then. And then I can go in and put, finish that way. They're not a huge curves, are they? No. They've got a little gentle curve it's, in them. These are lovely actually, yeah. really nice. I love the really deep curved ones too, but not for legs. So all I'm really doing still is just reinforcing the line. And now I've just got the front to do. So when I'm doing a pet trim, I like to, sorry, I'm just trying to get a nice finish on that. I like to give the dog a little bit of a sort of a straight line down here. And then I need to blend into a curve here so that the dog's got some shape to the leg. The last thing you want is a dog that's got no shape. So what I do is take, Obviously the waist is important, so I take the waist out and I'm, can you see I'm just going down in a straight line? Stop. Just need to get past you there. Now I need to see what's happening on the inside of this leg, because if you look down there, can you see, lots of people, lots of groomers miss that. Can you see that all that hair, this hair here? Mm -hmm. It's literally my bugbear, it drives me mad. I can spend hours there. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> So I want to. It looks that. like he's got a little bit of a lump out of his yeah, coat. Yeah, it does look like there's a piece in there. But I'm going to fix that in a minute. You won't see it. You didn't. You didn't cause it. I right? didn't do that. No. The last thing I should imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking this out. Let me come round. Hang on. Stop what you're doing. Right, let's. So basically, we've done the line on this side, haven't we? on this side when we went from the, around the back yes. and now I'm seeing it from the front. So when I'm, and you can see it's not as straight, the back still looks straight, yeah. but from the front it doesn't. And you were, were you scissoring sort of across a bit? No, I never, I never really scissor that way because it leaves marks. I, leave, I, I go that way. If I'm using thin as I will, yeah. but generally with straights, I, um, yeah, I, I go you with You try the, and get your angles yeah, right, exactly. yeah. Come down through. Just need to get around this, sorry, yes, sorry. Julie. So I'm just gonna, I am gonna scissor across here. Sorry, we are in a working salon. I'm just gonna put the tripod here. So you can see what's going on. And I'm gonna answer the phone. 
Let me see if you can see what I'm looking at. So, I don't know if you can see. See here, there's still quite a lot of hair that needs to come off here. And if you were to look from where I'm looking, I'm going to try and bring you around to see. There's still quite a lot of hair here that needs to be blended in. So, Tuesday, 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 I'm just going to, whoops. And it was in when, sorry, did you say, was it, um, Thursday. So I'm getting rid of that yeah. bit of hair that's missing. Yeah, and we'll go to Tuesday at half past two. That's lovely. Thank you, bye bye. So now what I'm doing is I'm just putting a, a nice finish on the leg. As you can see, this little bit here still needs, needs to be shaped. So I'm gonna take that out. And I like to scissor up when I'm using a, a, finish, a pair of finishing shears just to get that nice finish on the leg. I'm back. She's back. I'm back. Panic, panic. I've got a book in. That's quite a good, uh, no, somebody changed. So where I've taken a 5F down the back there, and then I'm scissored this in, I can blend it with my straights, or I have, I'm gonna introduce you to my chunkers, or my thinners now, because I haven't used them very much. Can you see that that little mark's almost gone, Julie? Yeah. But we're going to get rid of it completely. Pop, pop. With some thinners. So I'm just going to walk past you. Here you come. This is Stu's scissors band. It comes to use. There's so many. I don't know what to do. Let's try them. They might be blunt. I've got loads of... <laughs> Ah. The problem is I've got loads of scissors. I'm just going to show you, look, this is, this is Stuart's secret drawer as well. Look, 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 look it's just full of scissors. And that's only half of them. Yeah, I know. I've got loads of them in London and I just, you know. So there's this, this gap, I've nearly got rid of it. It's going to come over the top. But these are, what are these? What are these? They're they they katanas. katanas. Yeah, these are katanas as well. Um, so I'm just going to take out any extra with my katana chunkers and I'm going to get rid of that. So you use quite long scissors, don't you? I do. Yeah. Well, I'm a big boy. So always. would you suggest for just smaller people, smaller scissors then, or is that? Well, it depends on your hands. Yeah. So now I can cut that way because I feel like it's just dusting it off. Are you with me? Yeah. So I've got a nice shape to that leg. I could take a bit more off there. So Eve, I'm not always actually cutting the hair. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, Julie. <laughs> but sometimes I'm doing it. You're wafting. And I'm, yeah. Was it, was it, some people call it ghosting or? I don't know. Oh no, isn't that something to Facebook? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's, isn't that when you just get stood up at a date? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Me either. <laughs> Very when it comes to dating. I'm actually married. Uh, uh, that's it. Right, there's a little bit of hair, straight hair there. Oh, it's on my table. Because I've been very thorough. God. And now I'm just going round again and reinforcing everything I've done. And that's one leg, pretty much there. Oh, hang on, I'm not going to turn the camera because then everybody have to put their head on one side. <laughs> that looks really nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah hold on. Does that make it look slightly better? It's a little, in fact, when I, when you, <laughs> maybe everyone should film it because you start seeing things that you. <laughs> yeah. So it looks you, a bit, oh, there, it's a bit fuzzy there, but that's, yeah. oh, oh dear, sorry about that. I won't touch anything else. <laughs> <laughs> You're very funny, Julie. <laughs> right, move around. Come on. Right, let's keep some... moving. Keep moving. 
Yeah, so here as well. That's the whole point of this, is to check your work. Obviously, the groom's not finished until it's finished. So if you can just keep your mouth shut until the end. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That'd be very helpful thing to do, Lee. But I'm happy with that leg going forward. I'm just going to blend a little bit more here. Is John missing any joins? It's really hard to talk as well while you're grooming. Because normally you you normally have your earbuds in and you go into your little zone, I don't do. You? Well, I do if it's a hard dog, especially. I yeah. like to... But I'm very aware as well that you can, actually it's quite important to say, that you can miss things from a dog's noise. Yeah. So you need to make sure you can still hear. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, you don't. We can't hear what you're listening to. No. It's normally if you start singing that we know. Well, I love doing that. So oh. I'm going to go and move on to the front leg now so that you, you know, can see how I'm going to do that. Oops, then let me just get off my... Um, as you can see, I'm a really tidy groomer. Um, I've just noticed whilst I've come round here that there's a bit more to come off there. See, there's nothing wrong with keep, you just keep going over your work, you keep reinforcing the lines, you keep going over what you've done, because you know, you, there's every chance that you might have missed something. And I'm gonna just take out a bit more, oh, God, it's mad. I wonder my feet hurt when I'm here. I can take a bit more out now, because I can see where I've come from. Right. Have you noticed I ignored that comment? What's that? You keep going on about the mat and your feet. Oh God, whenever I work at my feet. Uh, uh. This, this feet. man has got the... Um, the socks. <laughs> if I took you out the back to where we where our staffing area is, there's about 12, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> no, you're not. 12 pairs of shoes. <laughs> it's because I need to find stuff that I can work in comfortably. 12 pairs of shoes. It's like, it's like, um, it's like, um, the sounds is bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I came in and I had a cup of coffee. I left my coffee cup on the side and they phoned me and be like, you've left your coffee cup on the side. <laughs> I was like, well, clean it up then. <laughs> <laughs> they probably thought you wanted to take it with you. Right, so I'm doing my front leg now. As you can see, one front leg is bigger than the other, but if you notice that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to try and fix that today, obviously. Uh, Head away. Like I said, same with the scissoring spray. I just like to spray it. Turn around, Stanley. And then blow it. Spray and blow. Stew, spray, spray and, and blow. blow. It, it could be... It it's could, a thing. It could take off. It's, when I launch my scissoring spray, it's going to be called stew, spray and blow. <laughs> spray and blow. <laughs> so we're about 42 minutes in. Oh, so Christ. if we trim Find this, this leg side, and then, and then do, the do his head yeah. spot on. Okay. And then we can take a nice after shot or a few after shots that people can can see of the uh, the finished group. Now what did I use the ones with the blunt ones, didn't I? So I'm doing the same as I did with the back leg, with the front leg. And I'm just going to try and get some columns in. Um, so I'm once again going to go straight across the front. Whereas I'm going to feel where the nail is and I'm not going to go further than that. And it's just a straight line. And reinforce it and that's where I start and then I'm going to make sure that all oh, there's no knots or snags or anything like that in I'm going to come around and I'm going to do join the dots I'm using straights for this And you open your scissors quite wide, don't you? Even for little detailing work. You... Do you know what? It's funny, I don't notice. Do yeah. you know? Is that yeah, what I do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, now it gets I've... the best finish. See, whilst I'm doing this, I'm still looking. I'm still looking at the whole dog because it's really important to stand back and keep looking. And look, can you see? What can you see those, these things that I've left, left here? I've missed it. I've missed that. And I've missed that. So, it takes two seconds. Done. And I'm sure there'll be other bits that I'll see in a I minute. I think we all do that, don't do we? we? Do we just oh, keep God. reinforcing yeah, our work? I, I think that's a thing. So with a front leg, what I do is, I don't know if it's right, it's just Stu's way. I lift it like this and I turn the foot, foot like it's walking. Are you right. with me? Yeah. Obviously get his ear out of the way. And Let then... if I can hold his head out of the way, that's better. And I just put my lines in. So I'm not doing it for finish or anything like that. 
all I'm doing is just taking the bulk of hair out and sort of going to where I want to go to, but I need to make sure that foot's down like it would be on the floor. And why do you, why, why do you need to make sure it's down I have like no that? idea. It doesn't, but I've done it both ways and it doesn't work the other way. Right, okay, so you end up with a pointy foot? I or? do, yeah, it doesn't oh, work right. right. Okay. So, because you take too much off probably the front of the foot. So, right, okay. And I'm not going that far down. So as long as I know where the foot bends, I'm doing that purposefully. These ears, Stanley. I know. Sorry, guys. Come up here a bit. So I'm just going around in a bit of a circle, still bending that foot. Stop, stop, stop. Good boy. Okay, and that's given me, it's if you come on this side. Yeah, it's given me a good inside line there. It's good. Yeah, it's, re it's given me a, a good, like, starter, sorry, his ears are crazy, of where I need to go to. Cool. Yeah, you with yeah. me? So now I know how much I can take off the front foot because that's where it's bent. You with me? I do. So he's standing if a bit funny now. If I just try and come round so people can see the shape you've got. Lovely. And then we'll look at the shape when we've finished. So now I'm just going to... So you've you've done all your blocking out the shape with with straights with or straights. curves. But... Oh, don't look. That's okay. <laughs> count to ten. Count to ten. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. They landed on my foot. Thank God. <laughs> And we have, we have the crash mat, so I'm that if you drop get... anything. Um, have I band? got a, there is, hang on to the camera. Okay. Actually, there might be one. There was, there's one, there was one there earlier. Oh, no. oh sorry. <laughs> hang on, it's not a car. We're just gonna try and find a band, just to put, Keep get Stan his ears out of the way. Out the way. That's it. Come on, Mr. Stan. Nice and loose. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. So it's nice and loose. We're not cutting any. We didn't want to lose any hair. I haven't got the skin in there, just the hair. No, exactly. <laughs> so now you can see a bit better. So where I've bent the foot, I've still got that hair there. And we've got this lovely straight line here. But I know that I can take that off. So it's again, once again, I'm joining the dots. I'm going to come around here to see if we can get that out better. Now I've come to the front and I'm right, I'm looking at this and I know that I've got a bit there already done. So I'm going to join that up so that I don't take too much off. But I'm going to start with this bit. So I'm going from the shoulder where I've clipped with the five and I need to blend in. So I stand at the front and scissor the side from the front to get my line in. So, I Hang on a sec, I'm going to stop what that? you're doing. I'm going to quickly come around here. Little mini tour of the salon there for everybody. So I've brushed it up, so everything's up and out. Yeah. And I'm looking from the front, and this is my 5F. Yeah. And I want, I want that to be a straight line. Cool. So. I take it out and I join it to the foot but there's still that hair there that I haven't taken off because I, I left it for the So it doesn't bend. look like that your leg's been added on. It's one complete it's straight exactly. line. If I just put the cone there, if you can do that, just show here. people the line, because that silver will make it a bit more there, like that. amazing. So straight down off the shoulder. Yeah. Cool. And then I'll just brush it up again and I'll reinforce it. And I'm just taking the very ends off to give it a nice. So now I've sorted that look out from the front, I need to make sure it looks okay from the side. Now, if you look at the side, it looks shit. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm joining the dots again. I've got my side in, and now I just need to come round. Okay. So you're kind of doing, you're treating it like a square to yeah. begin with. Yeah, I suppose so. And then, yeah, exactly. And then you're just going around it. The, 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 the trick off. is not to take too much off where you don't want it off. So I've still got quite a lot of hair there that's going to be fixed. And I've got loads at the back that haven't touched the back yet. So that's my next job. 
So if you wanted to get this length and you were quite a novice, what sort of comb attachment would you put over this? Um, I really hate comb attachments, but I, I know, know, I know there's a, yeah. I know there's no, a no, place don't. for them. I would probably go, what's the one above a yellow? Um, that's that's that the a five, so six. Five or six. Five or a six. six. Yeah, I'd yeah. say six. for this length, probably a six. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. And then sort of just pop a scissor finish on it. Oh, you've got a scissor finish on it. The trouble is, is that I can always tell us a, a leg that's been done with an extension comb and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But they always, they, the finish is never quite as good as a, a full scissor, just in my opinion, of a full scissor. So actually a good tip might be to take the bulk out with, the, with a long extension comb and then scissor it. Mm. And then you're using both and you're keeping the skin up. So as you can see from here, there's quite a lot of hair missing from here. But actually it's, it's not, we need that. We need, to, we need to use that to create the back of the leg. And now this is the point where you can really easily create a banana. Yeah. So you want to try and avoid doing that. So again, we're going to brush up. I'm going for, I put my, fit, my, my scissors, I can feel where the bone is. I want to bring it out. And I'm going to go straight down. I'm not in a very good angle. Hang on, stop what you're doing. That's better. So again, a bit of a straight line going down. I'm not going to go round. I'm letting the scissors drop off. Right, okay. See, um, and what's... You're going down to sort of what point? Is that the stopper pad there behind you? To be honest, when you've got your scissors in the right place, it does it. You're going in a straight line. You don't want... I, I don't actually look at where I'm going, I feel, I look at where the scissors finish, because they're straight. Right, okay. Are you with me? Yeah, so you're aiming straight for the table. Exactly. Right. So I've left quite a big sort of uh, boot leg. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And then I can fix that later. So now, if you look at the side, can you see this yep. got a bit of a bulge there? I'm fixing that. And then I start need to start looking at the bottom and I need to connect the dots. So I'm coming from the inside of the thigh now. And where you said it was a lovely mark, we've got our marker, but it's still untidy, it needs lots of work. So again, I've left quite a bit of hair underneath here. So again, I'm coming straight down and trying not to create that banana. So easy to do though, isn't it? Well, I do it all the time. I mean, I'm not perfect by any means. <laughs> and it's fine. If it, if it happens, it's easy to fix. You just take a bit more off. Yeah. yeah. It's a pet trim, so you can do that. Yeah, rubbish chop there. Right. Okay, here we so go. now these feet are the thing that's going to make it look nice. So you need to really pay close attention to anything that's hanging over and take it out and now remember in the back foot we gave that spring mm -hmm. we're doing the same with the front foot but only slightly so you're like beveling your scissors around yeah so i'm using my thumb to guide where my scissors go so from the front we're starting to see a nice leg are you with me yeah it looks lovely it's nice that his coloring all matches yeah he? it's beautiful he's lovely <coughs> excuse me Oh, I know, sorry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some more shaping with my chunkers. So I'm going to take out anything that I think needs to go. I know we put this um, yoga mat on the table for you. Um, has it been, has it made it easier it's for you harder. to see? It's a bit, well, it's, oh, for me? Yeah. It's harder to scissor on, but it's much easier to see. This dog's, this light in here is, even though it's really bright, this dog's hard to see. Yeah. So from the front, that looks nice. I'm just gonna take a little bit more off these, this area so that we've got a little bit of a definition of the foot. I don't want an Asian fusion foot. And I'm not gonna do that with curves. I'm gonna stand up, good boy. Okay. Coming down again, I'm just going to put a little bit of polish on. In the armpit, anything that sticks out, double check. So when you're putting your finish on, you keep your scissors sort of right very near the coat. Have you got kind of 
Any tips on sort of doing that? Do you know, when I judge sometimes, I notice people get into a rhythm of, it's almost like a dance, Julie. I, can, I watch it happen and I watch it with grooms that work for me and it's this. Yeah. And it's a, mm, 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 mm. and it's because it's quick and it's and it feels nice and it feels like you're doing. It feels the work. it's quite energetic. It's energetic, yeah. yeah. For me, the skill is is fighting against that and keeping them as still as possible. And I've given feedback to people before and gone, "You're bouncing too much," and they're hardly bouncing, and they're like, "Really? What?" And I'm like, "Well, I can see." I can see what you're doing and I can see why you do it. I totally understand it. And you know that dog and you know what you can get away with, but that finish can be 10 times better if you don't move your arm. And, <laughs> and also you always say, if I, if I yeah, move my body. And it's, um, uh, it's very energy efficient. You know, any, and not efficient, but energy, you know, you lose a lot of energy. And also you're- you're yeah, grooming's hard. You're making, um, you're making a lot of work for yourself, really. Yeah, I'm just seeing some more bits that have been coming off the back leg. I hate but, that inside that back no, leg. It's, it's so my hard, worst it? area ever. So now if you can see here, can you see, if you look here, can you see all that I've missed? Yeah. So that's the, always the last bit that I come to. Because it looks, that leg looks nice, but just not from the back. <laughs> so now I just finish it off and I'm, again, I'm just joining the dots. <clears throat> But looks oh, a bit too big. Taking that out. Trying not to create a banana. <laughs> All There's the so time think thinking, it, yeah, well, how can I make it look the best that it can look? I want my groom, I want my own to come back and go, oh, that looks so lovely. Again, you know earlier on I pushed the back leg forward. Do the same here. So I'm taking any hair away that doesn't need to be there. Come round, looking over Vera, obviously. Stand up, stand up. It's always important to just reinforce how he stands. Can you see how, can you see how heavy that foot is? Can you see how heavy it looks there? Oh, it's on that side edge. Yeah, yeah. that's gotta come out. I just need to. Oh. I don't think we should give up the day job, you know. What a cameraman and <laughs> <laughs> presenter. So. Well, me as cameraman. <laughs> so it's a bit heavy here. I'm going to take that out with my chunkers. Sometimes, I like to do a lot with straights. I don't like to overuse chunkers. Um, but at the back and at the side, sometimes it's just the easiest thing to do because you're taking out, you're not taking out it all at once with a big massive, do you mm. know what I mean? There's error, for, there's margin for error. They're, I mean, they're called the groomer's eraser, aren't yes. they? So that's not, you know. It's so now what I'm going to do is if you look from the front, Julie, I'm just going to take a little bit of this out so that you've got a nice, that looks lovely. It looks nice, right? Yeah. But I'm going to lift this up and look at that. See all that hair? Yeah. That's coming out of my chunk. I'm just going to. And are the you dots. rounding that or are you I'm, doing yeah, a straight I'm just, line? I'm, once again, I'm joining the dots. If you take too much off, you ruin it. So I'm just going to double check. There's a bit there that needs to come back. This looks nice. Correct my banana. <laughs> I'm always correct. I'm always correcting my banana. <laughs> um, and you know, I only came down to here with my five F. Yeah. Now I'm taking the. I'm correcting the seam, if you like. I don't do that until the very last thing. The 
just gonna get my little curved, I've got these lovely curved thinners. Oh, I love them. Yeah, they're lovely, aren't they? And I just wanna, it's, it's funny because the, the front leg is really just parallel lines. That's what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. But actually, it's a circle. It's still a circle. Mm. And the back leg has got much more angulation. So actually, weirdly enough, the back leg's easier. Because you've got, my, your eye is drawn to the mistakes that you're left with on the front. Are you with me? Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I'm sort of like, what I, the areas I find quite hard is this bit here. So popping, you know, getting the getting leg in, in here and not putting it too yeah. far back. And a banana feet, you know, when when the owner yeah, wants, oh, can so I have it a bit shorter? You're like, oh, it's going to look rubbish. But I always find if you leave this bit last, yeah, you can no, just blend that in. Blend it in. Yeah. So that's probably done. And I will, like I like I do with the back leg. I'll be keeping an eye on it the whole way through so that I can match the other one. Because you've got to fix it, haven't you? You've got to fix the bits that aren't quite right. And now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Julie. I don't know if you can see, but can you see all this under here? There's some hair that's in actually, it's taking my eye. So if you stand, can you see that? Oh, yeah. I don't like that. Right. Okay. So, because it's pulling focus for me. So I'm going to go with, on my 10. Let's go in. Let's go in. It's upsetting my happiness, making my foot itch. So then, just going to pull everything up. And I'm going to go over it one more time with my chonkers. And if you've done it right, it should take two seconds from when you've brushed it up because you're just putting, again, putting a little bit of finish on it. I'm just going over my feet one more time because now that I've cut the hair away, I can make it look tidier. I think about there, aren't we, Julie? Yep. Done. Right. On to the head. So I'm going to do this side when in the privacy of my own front room. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously he's got, um, he's got a gorgeous head. Like he's just, look how beautiful he is. He's so lovely and he's so friendly and I love him very, very much. Do you think we can swing him round? I'll oh, do it that way. And do it that way. Then I can get back a bit further and we can get sure. kind of everything in. See, now I've just looked round there and I've stood back a bit. And I've noticed something, Julie, that I've left from that bulge. Can you see where I've come down here? Oh, yeah. On the front, I'm, that's bulging out a bit. So I'm just going to fix that. Mr. Attention to detail. Well, you've, I think you've got to, haven't you? And that's how, that's how you get better. That's it. Done. Right. Yes, right. So... First of all, let's take the band off and let's see what we're working with. So what we want with Stanley is a nice round head. Um, and he's got all this gunk in front of his back, can you see? And if that hair gets in between their teeth, it can rot their teeth, do you know that? I did. It's gross. Acts like dental floss. It does, it? Yeah. yeah. Just so, stabilizes. And I can do this, the top of this head with curves or chunkers. But I'm going to use an extension comb today. Oh, awesome. Controversially. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. I know, that. I'm going to, because I think it's a pet groom. It's, you know, I know that it's a poo with cabochon. So I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing some more little bits that need to come. We're not, um, we're not, I'm not set up for you doing an extension comb. <laughs> well, well, first of all, I'm going to... What number do you want? I don't know yet. I'm going to have a look. Okay. But first of all, what I need to do is go up to the occiput with the 5S. Yeah. The 5S. 5S. The 5S. Five Stewie. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Stewie's 5. Stewie's 5. Stay there, big boy. Big boy. Not ready yet. So, as you can see, there's all this hair here. I'm going up to here and taking that out. 
and I'm still on the fire there. So you're like setting the head and getting rid of all the yep. bits. I go underneath his chin and I'm gonna take all this off. Oh, hang on. This is still with the five. I'm lifting his ear up and anything below the ear I'm taking out. Bye. <laughs> so that's his ear, gone. And do you know why I do that? Because it's not seen. What's the point of that in the air? It just creates warmth and you don't want that, or heat. So I'm taking all that out. So I've got a nice full head to work with. This inverted V, I'm taking that to under the chin. So just explain that inverted V again. So I'm just literally, you can feel it. If you can put your finger, I mean, you don't have to do it because I'm sure you know it's there, but there's a bone. <laughs> you probably know what it's called. I, I do, don't. but it's fine, it's a bone. It's a bone and it does a V itself. And what I do is allow my blade to follow that V. Okay. I think that's a good tip. And I'm taking all the weight away. So it's left me with a bit more to take off there. So basically I've got, I've got a circle. It goes round here, under the neck, under the, the ears, under the neck, and under, under the chin, that's, that's hair free, or to the length that I want it to be. And then I can happily put my noose back on because I'm not gonna touch anything around there anymore, so that's done. So your neck is not so going to get in the way at exactly. all, is it? Exactly. So yeah. I'm just going to use its safety, really, for me. And I'm going to go with a really long extension comb first. So I'm going to go with um, a six. Is that a six? Um, I'm going to these. Yeah. I'll try a six first and see how it looks. And if it's too long, I'll go down. But it's always best to start long. That's not going to work. Because I need a blade. Thank you. Glamorous <laughs> assistant. Thank you, yeah. assistant. Um, so I'm starting with my number six, and I'm just going to go in reverse. It's perfect, actually. I'm just going to go in reverse, and I'm just going to let it. I'm not going with the head. I'm allowing it to just drop over the eyes. Okay. So I don't take it. So I don't go down. Like on. I'm skim skimming. Yeah. So you're getting all the shape in the back, but leaving the front to scissor. Exactly. So it gives me less to blend at the back. Because I've still got to blend that. Yes. It's, it's too much. And I'm also lifting the ear up and taking anything from in front of the ear out. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. make him jump. Oh, he's, I, you think he might have that. He's got an ear problem. Yeah, he's been settled though. Yeah, he's been absolutely fine. Probably won't be now. And the same on this side. Taking that, just taking a little bit off. Right, so. Sorry, it's not me. So now I'm going to concentrate on blending the back of my head into the neck because that's then I've done from there back. Okay. I'm going from the top of the ear and I'm using my thinners, the curves. And I'm just blending. I know you're calling it, that, are they thinners? No, they that, are. Well, they are thinners, yeah. yeah, they're curved thinners. They're the. Um, the not Contos the, ones. Not the chunkers, are they? No. Kind of not quite chunkers. Hang on, I'm going to come round. So I'm just, and, and also what I'm also going to do while I'm on the top, top of his head is lift it all up again because even though I've done that extension comb, I want to finish it with a nice finish. Okay. So I'm going to get my curves, my slight curves. And I'm just going to double check. Again, you can see the scissors are not coming away from the head at all. They're staying there. Did you used to practice your scissoring or? Um, well, to be honest, do you know what? When I years ago when I trained, I did practice my scissoring then. And then um, I never used extension combs and I, and I, no, they, they, was, they weren't around. They were, no, exactly where they were. <laughs> they me. And even though it took me loads longer, I just kept on doing it and kept on doing it. And then I realised 
that I can create anything with my scissors. I don't necessarily leave an extension comb. And, and the, the more that you do it, the more you get your technique. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. So I think that's why I, I quite, I'm quite a good scissorer. Right, so now that I've done the back and I've blended it into the back of the head, oh. Judy's not the phone. <laughs> I'm going to put that there. Oh, oh, hang on, got that wonky. Oh, hello, tells us at Leonard's. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll part. Actually, can I take a give? Can I take a number and give you a tinkle back? Would that be okay? Okay, I, I've got it on the phone. I've actually got it on this phone. So I, I'll, yeah, I'll give you a call back in about half an hour or so. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Right, so where do we get to? So we you blend it in the back of the head, you scissor it into the top of the ears. So I'm leaving the top of the head, this bit here, just above the eyes, I'm leaving that for now. And I'm gonna go back, push it all back, and I'm gonna see what needs to come off in the eyes. Now obviously we want the eyes to be nice and clean and clear so that you can see. So I'm gonna use a pair of thinners and take anything that's on the corner of the eyes out. Now it's funny because I, I know that lots of people use uh, trimmers for this, don't they? Yeah, they can do, yeah. yeah. So you can use either way. It's, I like to use my thinners. I, used, I also use straights, just to get right in there. You come over your other shoulder. Sure. Oh, I don't know if that's any better. I think it might be. So, not ideal to blow, blow in. Oh, I just direct, come in close Can you see there? Yeah. It's got a bit of weepy art on this side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to brush all the hair forward. And I'm going to give my little visor, using my straights. Put it all down. Go to the bridge of the nose. Take anything off. And you're just angling those scissors in slightly. They're exactly. not upright, are they? No, they're an angle. If you do it upright, the end of the dog ends up like this. <laughs> Looking really, <laughs> excited, like, really surprised all the time. Now that we've scissored that in, you can see we're starting to get... I'm just going to reinforce it, so I'm going to pull everything back down again. Again, it's about reinforcing. Stop it, Stanley. Good boy. And I'm taking... I'm not curling round, it's just a straight line. Okay, with me? Yep. Right, so now I can blend the top of the head in with my thinners. So you do that sort of front to back I rather do. than over the top. Yeah, okay. I do. I just keep and then I keep looking from the side, all angles, to see that I've got everything I want off, off. Off, off. Off, off. So can you see we're starting to get a shape? Yeah, it looks nice. So now, now that I've got my top and my back done, I don't want to take too much more off because I can fix it later. Now I want to take my sides. So the elastic band comes out again. Because I've done the top of the head, I know that's all right. The ears are going up. It's just loose. It's just so that it's out of the way. And I take all this off. So from the corner of the ear, I'm blending, but I'm not obviously following the skull. I'm coming out, I'm making, letting the scissors do the work because it's still a round circle. With me? Mm-hmm. So that's one side. Now, if you look at the front, straight curve, you need to just blend that in. Again, you're joining the dots. Got it? Yep. Other side. 
This is always the tricky side for a lot of people. <laughs> so I go from Hang on. above. From above, right. Yeah. And I'm always double checking that I'm not taking more off than I have on the other side. <laughs> The other side. <laughs> so I can do it this way as well, but you can't see the other side if you do that. And you need to make sure that you're not over egging the custard. Yeah. Are you with me? So I'm taking everything off from underneath that ear. Good boy. So now if you look, that is done. It might need a bit of honing, but it's pretty much there. We've taken a little bit more out of that but the, the shape is right. Are you with me? Yeah, all done. And that didn't take very long, did it? No, not at all. So now what we do is we work out what we're gonna do with the, with the muzzle. Now with this, I'm probably gonna take that off if I can with a 10, if you let me. Sometimes they're a bit funny, aren't they? And the trouble is, is that they bloody lick. Oh, I know. <laughs> as soon as you try and do it. So I'm just gonna take that off. Oh, good boy. Good That's it. And oh, it's good. And it's so nice. much nicer, isn't yeah. it? It's so much cleaner. You just know that it must feel so much better. Anything else that's in there? You can always fix with your comb. So now that we've got that, I'm going to make sure everything's brushed out. You can start to see what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to try and give him a nice little round muzzle. So I'm going to the curves. And I'm, again, I'm going to join the dots. Oh, I'm not getting a very good angle on that. So I'm just... That's better. Yeah? Yeah. So you're kind of doing it in sections? Yeah, that, so I've, right? done, I've done a side, so I've joined that up. I don't want to take too much off this, but so I see a lot of groomers, they take loads off the bottom lip and they end up with this weird moustache thing. Yeah. I don't like that. So I'm just blending the side in with the side of the head that I've done. Stop. Stop being nosy, Stanley. We've never been filmed before. <laughs> So you're leaving quite a bit on the top of the nose? Yeah, I do like to leave a little bit on there because it gives character, I think. I don't know if it is. So I have to really concentrate on this face a bit because and it's so easy to go wrong, can't it? That's the trouble. Well, and there's lots of bits on it that can get hurt. Yeah, and so you'll forgive me if I go a little bit quiet at this point, because I'm just trying to get it right. I'm sure you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just still reinforcing everything that I've done. Now I'm going to close the nose, close the mouth. <laughs> and I'm still using thinners at the minute. I'm coming from underneath. Taking everything off, but I've still got this little bit of hair here and here. Are you with me? Yeah. And I don't want to get rid of it, I just need to create this circle. It is really just about joining the dots for me. coming together. Can you see it coming together? Absolutely, yeah, that's fab. And then I'm going to turn my dinners over and do the same on the other side that I did on the other side. There's a bit, can you see I've taken a bit out of there, but it's still in here. So point that out So again. there, I'm taking this out already. Yeah. If you look at the front, you can see it's more, whereas oh, you can see yeah. it's sticking out here. So I need to fix that. 
So I go above the head. You've got to make sure it's in symmetry. Right, so now we're looking from the front of the dog and we've still got loads of this nasty old hair here. And it's lovely, we just need to cut it so that it's a nice shape. If you're doing a white dog, yeah. do you, uh, that's got a lot of staining, mm -hmm. what do you do with that sort of thing? I generally scissor it out. Yeah. I will, yeah, I'd scissor it out or just leave it. I mean, once you've washed it, it pales down anyway, I find. Now I've taken this out a bit more. So I'm still leaving hair, but I'm just shaping it up so that it looks nice when he's got his mouth open. So you're using your curves kind of up and down and forward and back as well, aren't you? Yeah, so I'm always so reinforcing. So everything's, everything's curving. Yeah, because, I mean, the poodle's got a round head. And can you see this here? I want to get rid of that. If you can just show his head to the camera, just, just for a few seconds. Lovely. Yeah? Yeah. So now, again, I'm just reinforcing because what I've done is I've taken the bottom quite short, mm -hmm. but the top's still quite high. So I just need to make sure that we're balanced. So where's your, where's your center point on this head? Well, it's there, it's his nose really, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why I need to make sure that anything... So up and up above the nose and down below the nose should be similar. the same, yeah. yeah. So now I'm looking from the side. And then the magic of this is I've taken loads of hair out of here. Can you see? Yeah, loads. There's loads. And this side too. And what's going to happen now is the magic. Because... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't, even, I didn't even know what's going to happen well, when I'm not Because, look, <laughs> I've, let the hair, I've let the ears down and the ears drop the face a little bit so that you've got a nice... Sort oh, he looks gorgeous. He looks like a lovely little face, exactly. And then I just take my, my curves and go over anything that I think is slightly out of place. Anything that can be just that extra attention to detail. Because you'll never get that beautiful finish with a thinner. No, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. With these, with these um, wool coats, is the the chunkers are great for kind of blocking out shape, yeah. which is what they're really for, I think. And uh, but you can't really um, you can't replace the straight scissor, can you? No. Right. So now we've got the head, and now what I do, if you look from the side here, I just want to. Right, I'm going to come round to the side. You know, because we left this bit, it's not been done by machine. We just need to blend it from the hand scissor to the machine scissor. Oh, you know, okay, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you're just yeah. reinforcing your work one more time. Just making sure that everything looks still as one haircut rather than one person's done one bit and one person, someone else has done something else. Taking the hair out of the corner of the eyes so that you can see lovely Stanley. And you're right, there is always a side, isn't there? That it's always hard as you do, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so face done. Now, tricks with the ears. <laughs> and I'm very, like, I, I, Julie will tell you, I really don't like doing um, cocker spaniels. I find it really hard. Well, you moan about them a lot. I do moan about them. I mean, like, I think they look nice when I do them. Oh, yeah, you do a nice job. Yeah. But you, if you see them in the diary. <sighs> Just one second. Um, has he got a, an appointment? Yeah. Oh, so do you want to, we just let him in? Yeah. Is he early? Honestly, don't know. Can't see the I'm just going to bring that back. Oh! So what I do with the ears... You might have to pick that up and show that yourself. I will go and get... Okay. <laughs> So we've got a customer here. So I'm just gonna wait until he's gone. I'm just gonna read, can you see here on the top of the head, 
a little bit more that needs to come off. Okay, do you do? I did. I reinforce the head. See I'm always looking constantly at everything else. So once I finish one bit I'm still grooming a whole dog. The dog is one thing. So even though I'm doing the head I'll be looking at the back legs, I'll be looking at the front legs. I'm always reinforcing the work I've done. I'm back. She's back. So with these ears, I mean they're lovely aren't they? Look at these beautiful ears. They're so, they're so full, there's so much of them. What I do is, because I don't like doing Cocker Spaniels, and I know with a Cocker Spaniel you're taught to do this beveled ear, yeah. aren't you? Bell. It's a bell ear, and I don't like it. And I think that, that you can create that bell even without beveling it. So I, again, it's a bit like doing the dance. So I brush everything down like this, and I pull everything out, like that. And then I get my straight, so don't use my curves, and I just chop it off. And that is pretty much <laughs> all I ever really do with these ears. Because I've missed quite a bit of hair, what I'll do is just use my curves. If you stand up, Stanley, because you've got to let the dog stand, otherwise it's going to not sit in the right place. Can you see how it's going down slightly? Oh, yeah. So all I do is join... It's the same, oh, same thing again. I'm just joining the dots, and that's it. And what I then have to do is curve thinners, other way round, blend it in at the top of the ear. Oh, that's cool. So if you look from the front, I just want to create that bottom. All I'm doing is fix it with my thinners, and that's a nice finished ear. It's quite hard to see. Oh, that's better. It's better. Yeah. Yeah. Like and that's better. all I do with it with an ear. I don't like doing anything more because I think if they're over scissored, they look horrible. Yeah, they look all steppy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because this, this hair is quite, it's quite dead and dry, isn't yeah. it? And it can But it's quite terribly. unforgiving as well. Oh, yeah. So you just have to make sure that obviously all the knots are out, which I clearly Ten. haven't done. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, he's got worry. massive ears. He's got such big ears. And you put them up in a band a couple yeah. of times. So you set up. And again, I'm just pulling it out. I'm gonna, do you mind if I go around that side, Jim? Yeah, sure. To do. The customer was early. Now there's yes. a surprise. Yeah. Never, we never, we never, though, we never see. have um, appointments at quarter to the hour. Yeah. So again, I'm pulling it all the way out. I'm getting my straight. We're both gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now some people are like, "How do you know how much you cut off? Have you done the right amount?" Well. I know roughly the amount, but if this side's shorter than that side, you just fix it. Go back? Yeah, you just go back and fix it. So that's that done. Put it down and once again, I'm just gonna reinforce what I've done. I think you'll see they're probably about even because I'm usually quite good at that. And I'm gonna use my curved spinners once again. And now what I want from the front is just to fix anything that sticks out. This side, let me just fix that ear. Head up. We're done. 
But I want to get a good shot of his head because it looks really lovely. Okay. <laughs> if we turn him round. Come on, Mr. Stanley. Or is he as even, Judy? I will yeah. check in just a tickety boo. Let me take this off. Yeah. They look fine. I mean, that one's winging out. Oh, a bit, but it's because so, I've got my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Stanley! Oh, Stanley! <laughs> so cute. So I'm going to finish the other side and then I shall add some photos, shall I? Yeah, that sounds like a brilliant idea. Perfect. Okay, well, thanks for joining me and I hope you've uh, learned something. I think there's uh, loads to be said for scissoring and pet grooming. I always say to my staff and to anyone that knows me, for me, it's not always about the perfect dog, it's about making the imperfect dog look perfect. So that's kind of, that's my aim, my ambition. I don't look for the best dogs that come in the salon. I want the sort of scruffy ones to try and look the best they can possibly look. And that's, that's our job, that's our challenge. So anyway, good luck at Madramania and I'll see you on the other side. Bye.